Welcome to Dory Cody on Shamanism, a weekly podcast that explores one theme in shamanism throughout each month. Get comfortable, have a seat, and let's get started. Welcome to this week's podcast, where we talk about tribes who come together for the purpose of spirituality or expressing their spiritual beliefs. Dory, through the many years that you've been teaching shamanic practices, do you see your students wanting to create a tribal community like those of our indigenous ancestors? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think I spoke to that some in an earlier podcast on this topic. Um, what happens naturally is pure magic to observe. And I'm sure I'm not the only shamanic teacher who gets to witness this, but I, I find it absolutely fascinating that students come together from all directions, many from out of state. They don't know each other. They've never met each other. We come together in circle. We uh, practice shamanism. I lead them in some work. They do ceremonies together. They dance and drum and sing. They go outdoors and sing to the sun. They connect with the trees. And by the time that community, that circle of students has met, by the third meeting, without any doubt whatsoever, they have become tribe. They are so bonded that it is literally awe-inspiring to observe. And they want to be connected. They don't stay connected because I make them stay connected. They want to stay connected. They get together. I don't even know that these things are happening. They get together. They go do canoe trips together in the summer. They do all kinds of things to keep that tribal sense that they have alive um, between meetings. And I don't think that happens just in shamanic communities. I think it happens in any um, you know, a spiritual community that comes together where people really care about each other and share on a deep level. Certainly people who, um, you know, who have a Buddhist practice or, uh, you know, an Eastern, uh, an Eastern uh, meditation practice, they come together to practice meditation and, you know, certainly something magical happens in that environment. But it isn't the same kind of sharing, the deep sharing that happens. They share space, they share belief, they share their hearts, they create a harmonious environment. But I believe there's a huge difference when people come together and really share their hearts, get down to the nitty gritty of, you know, this is who I am. This is truly the spirit of me. This is you know, where I am today, the deep down truth telling of who you are. And, and so, you know, that happens, I believe, in other kinds of spiritual communities, you know, and certainly some, um, some, you know, organized religious communities where people share deeply and they truly, truly love each other and take care of each other. And so those are places where a tribe gets um, created. I know some small Christian churches here in Maine that are very, very bonded and truly do do the Christian thing of taking care of each other. They don't just look to the minister to be doing the, um, you know, the visiting people in the hospital and taking food to people who are not well. The community really takes responsibility for that. That's truly tribe. Um, so many other, you know, spiritual communities and churches don't do that. They rely on the minister or the priest to take care of all that stuff. It's like, you know, we pay him or her to do that. And so they do it. And I, I can be free from worrying about that because I give money to the church. But that's not really tribe. Tribe is where, you know, each participant is responsible for the other. Um, so I believe that, you know, people are being called to, um, to do 
to create small spiritual communities where truth and honesty and um, opening the heart and really truly being um, connected with one another and not being responsible for each other's life or death, but being uh, responsible for the well-being of each other through prayer, through you know, sacrificing your time to be present for another, to by caring about what happens with the other person in your tribe. Those uh, communities are popping up more and more. And I believe in my sense that although some people might think that we would be devolving by going back to tribal kinds of ways of being, I believe that the evolution of our world is somewhat dependent upon us going back and recreating um, tribe amongst ourselves for the sake of our survival and the sake of our happiness and the sake of our celebrating our lives and the life of the planet. And, um, and I feel really privileged to be able to participate in tribe all the time through my shamanic communities. Shamanism is an ancient practice, and yet modern-day people are increasingly being drawn to the practice of shamanism. Why do you believe so many people today are attracted to this earth-based way of being and living at this time in our human history? Well, that kind of ties into uh, part of what I was saying in the other, uh, the answer to the other question, which is that uh, people are really looking to find um, a tribe that means something to them. I was on the phone just the other night with um, with a woman who is interested in uh, becoming uh, a member of the 2017 uh, shamanic apprenticeship circle that I will lead. And you know, it's only June 2016, but people already begin this early you know communicating with me about wanting to be in the next circle and why is that well in her case and she lives out of state uh, it was her husband who um, actually looked for a community a shamanic community that she might participate in and left her a photo of the home page of my website saying here honey I think you should do this because you really need to get your joy back. And so he knew her well enough to know that there's something about a connection to the earth, to a deep, deep, deep connection to nature and um, the earth-based spirituality that we practice in shamanism that she really needs to have in order to be able to um, thrive, not just survive, but thrive in her life. She has a very demanding professional life uh, that she's very successful in, but she needs this in order to complete her circle of life. And so, you know, I'm just using that as an example, but I believe that people are called to this work because the work of shamanism, the practice of shamanism is not, it is somewhat internal, but it is not entirely internal. It's about connecting with nature. You know, one of the first things we do with students is we send them outside and give them the opportunity to create a relationship with a tree and really, really bond with a tree. Because the tree will talk to you, the tree will answer you, the tree will respond to you, the tree will feed you its energy. The tree will root you. It will do all kinds of things for you if you take the time to come to know it in the ways that our ancestors knew the trees in their backyard, the trees in their forest. And we yearn for that. It is missing in our culture, in our urbanized world of concrete and uh, shopping malls and 
automobiles and uh, air pollution and all of that, we yearn for that connection to the earth and the beings of the earth. And so shamanism speaks to that. And that's why I believe so many people are being drawn to shamanism uh, at this time. Sort of like recharging a part that has, has run down or lost its source. Yes, I believe that's true. It's, it's the, the illness of being disconnected mm -hmm. from nature. And people are beginning to realize that they need that in order to feel well, in order to feel that joy and that connection that is missing. And sometimes people don't, you know, don't get it until they actually have the experience that they have been missing something. It's hard to know that you're missing something if you've never actually had it. Mm -hmm. So with, with, um, you know, depends on where you grew up and under what circumstances you grew up and how much exposure to nature you had. But um, even people who have never had that, when they get it, when they have the opportunity to be exposed to it and they understand it, um, the amazing transformation that happens is a privilege to witness. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had such situations where, you know, I, I think back a couple of years ago, there was a husband and wife who came to, um, to an introductory shamanic workshop. And it was the wife really who wanted to come and her husband came with her just to accompany her. He really had no interest, none whatsoever. And I, you know, I mused about whether what that experience was going to be like for him because he really wasn't there for himself. And as it turns out, he had probably a deeper experience of the weekend than she did. And she was the one who really was interested at the beginning. And so, um, you know, that, that was just an amazing unfolding for him of, you know, some major aha moments of, oh, this is what's missing in my life. And yes, I get this and I can sustain this now that I've been introduced to it. <laughs> what advice do you have about engaging tribe for help, particularly for anyone who is feeling alone, depressed, or even suicidal? Yes, that's, you know, where again, you know, the, the presence of tribe or being part of a tribe is so um, um, imperative because there are so many people who are um, disconnected from, from others. And even if they're surrounded by people, they're disconnected because they don't have people around them who are willing to really listen to who are you? What makes you tick? What is going on inside your heart? What are your losses? What are your joys? What, you know, come sit with me, come have a cup of tea, come be with me. I want to hear what you have to say. I care about what you think and what you have to say. Those, those are the kinds of things that people within a tribe do for each other. And when we don't have that, then depression is a frequent visitor and uh, disconnection, a sense of malaise and not caring about the future or not caring about taking care of oneself. And then for some people, sadly, you know, suicide becomes an option and is often acted on. And if, if people are living or are at least a part of some tribal community where that kind of deep caring really happens, then the likelihood of rampant depression and um, the deep seated depression that leads to suicidal thoughts and actions is less likely to occur. 
you know, when we hear about, it just breaks my heart when I hear about teenagers who are committing suicide. And almost always it's somebody who is being seriously misunderstood. They're in a school and they're different in some way. And they're not being heard. They're not being cared about. They're potentially being bullied. Or they have some deep secret in their heart that they can't talk about. Perhaps their, you know, their sexuality is something that is really uh, haunting them and they can't talk about it because they have problems that, you know, they knew if they talked about it with their parents, it would mean being thrown out of the home or, you know, other similar cares and concerns. And and so suicide becomes an option and it's truly, it's the sadness of not having people around who really get you, who understand who you are, who care about who you are, who care about what you're thinking and feeling. And so, you know, a school can become a tribe if it has the right kind of community. You know, typically schools have an emblem, they have a song, they have, um, a um, dress code, a, a dress code. They have a totem, you know, what I would, which often is like a power animal, you know, where the tigers, where the bears, where the, you know, chipmunks or whatever. And, um, and what happens, what the potentiality of what could be a tribe falls apart because there is no encouragement for the most part within public schools, which have become so huge in many cases, for the individual to be honored and respected and cared about and listened to. And so we, we again, have created these false communities that are just, you know, like conveyor belts where the teachers are disenfranchised, they don't care, the administration is... Um, under so much pressure to, to meet certain rules and regulations imparted by the state and the federal government. And so the children in the meantime get lost and we end up with people who are depressed and suicidal. And it doesn't have to be that way. If we could go back, let's, let's go back to the way we were in a tribal community where people really understood and cherished and listened to one another and honored one another, regardless of what their gifts might be. So I studied healing in a cross-cultural perspective. Mm -hmm. And there were two ceremonies from two different tribes that struck me that are relevant to this question. One was when someone was in deep depression or malaise or the dark night of the soul, the mm -hmm. tribe would come together and give that person gifts, honoring them, because that person alone was in, when it was in a place of honor because that person alone had the ability to make a new relationship with spirit. Mm. Interesting. And so they were deeply honored. Even though the person was in pain, they mm. were held by the tribe through the pain mm. of like, you're on to something here. Keep mm. going. Mm -hmm. So that moved me deeply. The other one was the tribe would come together in a circle and put the person who was having issues on the outside. Mm. And that person's job was to find a way into the circle, to go around the circle and 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 keep at it until they found a place where they could connect. Mm -hmm. The people in the circle had to examine their hearts until they authentically were willing to let this person in. Uh -huh. because, I love that. Yeah. Because they were part of the disconnect. Yes. And so that was a very powerful ceremony. Also, just even thinking about this symbolically, with people who are in deep depression. Yes. It's, I think, helpful <laughs> on how tribe can heal. <clears throat> so I, I believe we have covered this topic quite thoroughly. I, I 
really encourage people to send me emails or connect with me in some way to explore this further. I don't think that this is the end of our conversation about this, but for now, um, I feel that I have conveyed what I uh, have had in my heart that I wanted to convey to the listening audience. So thank you for being a part of listening to these uh, podcasts in the last four weeks on this topic of tribe. And I'll look forward to us connecting again uh, next week on a completely different topic. Thank you for listening to Dory Cody on shamanism. We'd love to hear your thoughts, stories, reactions, and questions. Come on over to DoryCody.com and join the conversation. And tune in next week for more on this subject or next month for a new subject. You can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes or sign up on DoryCody.com to receive notices when the podcasts are posted. That's Dory, D-O-R-Y, and Cody, C-O-T-E, dot com. Drumming and Rattling by Dory Cody and Terry Morgan. Technical Assistance and Audio Production by JillHackett.com. And this is Susan Savell, wishing you many blessings in your life. We hope to have you join us next time.